Hello everyone, mic test, mic test. Hello everyone, Mike Tess. Hello, Veron. Hi, Ling, Lin. Ying Ying, Janet. Okay. Okay. Alright, welcome to today's Facebook Live. My name is Kevin Huang, and I've been working as the Curriculum Specialist in Maths Heuristics since 2011. Being involved in curriculum development, online learning, and coaching primary school students in problem-solving heuristics for tackling challenging problem sums in maths. So let me talk a bit about my company, Maths Heuristics. From our early beginnings as an enrichment center, Maths Heuristics has gone on to become an industry influencer. Today we are a leading content provider lauded in Singapore as an icon in the research of mathematics teaching methodologies. So Maths Heuristics was set up to help students achieve breakthroughs in their studies of mathematics. So for that to happen, students need an all-around support. Today Maths Heuristics offers a total learning experience with a suite of learning tools, classes, guidebooks, mobile apps, web videos, and virtual classrooms. By embracing technology, we give students, parents, and educators 24-7 access to our expertise. So let me show you a little video about the baffling reality of today's PSLE maths. Oh, and let me get my head out of the way.
Sorry, give me a while to figure this out. Okay, never mind about that. <laughs> so, sorry for the technical glitch. It's been a while since I did the Facebook Live. So I think I'll just ignore this part. Probably I'll show it to you next week. Okay, so on to Facebook Live teaching. In a span of three weeks since school reopened, I have already gotten numerous texts or PM or email Facebook posts as well as inquiries from our students and parents asking me if I will be about the before and after scenario types of maths problems. So the before and after concept is one of the 11 heuristics advocated by MOE primary, for primary maths. So this concept is commonly tested for P4 to P6 exams spanning across the topics of whole numbers, fractions, decimal, ratio, percent we are whole number, fraction, decimal, ratio, and percentage. So I thought instead of replying them individually, how about I share the unit transfer method on how it can be applied to all these problems effectively and efficiently. So I will be conducting a five session mini course through Facebook Live Weekly, just like how I've been doing it for the whole of last year. So this way, more parents and students can benefit from this method. Okay. So introducing the unit transfer method. Now it is a common practice for parents to jump online and seek help for particular maths problems through forums and social media. And you will receive many types of responses with some claiming their methods to be the fastest or the shortest for solving maths problems. Now what many people do not realize is that these methods are basically ad hoc scenario based solutions and might not be applicable to other solutions, other scenarios. So the moment the same type of problem is paraphrased or a different type of question is presented, the child won't be able to apply the particular solution learned. Now scenario based solutions are ineffective and encourages the child to memorize the solution. And that's why the child gets stumped when the question is tweaked. Now instead, what I'm going to introduce you is an effective problem solving technique, one that is more universal, where the strategy can be applied across all types of questions and topics. So this is the unit transfer method for P4, and this is the unit transfer method for P6. Okay. Okay, let me try a bit, let's try something a bit different. Let me play a video recording taken from my parents' webinar. Hopefully this time it doesn't crash again. <laughs>
If it does, I'll just go back to manual mode. <coughs> okay, it's good. Now, before we begin, it is important that you understand how to allocate units because if you don't and you misinterpret the problem, set up the problem wrongly, the entire question will be marked wrong. So there are five major topics. Now before we begin, it is important that you understand how to allocate units because if you don't and you misinterpret the problem, set up the problem wrongly, the entire question will be marked wrong. So there are five major topics at the P5 and 6 level. They are whole numbers, fractions, decimals, ratio, and percentages. Let's start with whole numbers. Tom has five times as many stickers as Mary. Change this five to a fraction, five out of one. Now the denominator goes to the right item, so fix this first. And then the numerator goes to the left. We observe the keyword is as many, so Tom will have 5 units while Mary has 1 unit. Now Tom has 5 times more stickers than Mary. Change this 5 to 5 out of 1 again. Denominator goes to the right, numerator goes to the left. But we observe that the keyword has changed. It is now more stickers than Mary instead of as many. What does this mean? Whatever Mary has, which is 1, Tom will have 5 more than her. So Tom will have 6 units, while Mary has 1. On to fractions. Tom gave away 3 fifths of his stickers. So this denominator 5 refers to the total amount of stickers. This numerator 3 refers to given away. The total will be 5 units, of which 3 was given away, so he will be left with 2. Tom's stickers increased by 3 fifth. The denominator represents the total number of items. The numerator 3 represents the action. Before it was 5 units, the change is plus 3, and the after is now 8 units. Similarly, Tom's stickers decrease by 3 fifths. The denominator 5 refers to the total number of stickers, of which 3 was decreased. Total will be 5 units, change is minus 3, and now he has 2 units. Now on to him. Now on to a mixed number. When we have a mixed number like 4 and 3 fifth, we want to change it to an improper fraction first. So this will be 23 out of 5. Once we've done that, we can allocate the denominator to the right. 23 numerator goes to the left. And we see that the keyword is as many. So Tom will have 23 units. Mary will have 5 units. Tom has 3 fifth as many stickers as Mary. Allocate the denominator to the right. Fix it there first. Numerator to the left. And we observe that the keyword is as many. So Tom will have 3 units while Mary has 5 units. Now number 8 and number 9, be careful here. Tom has 3 fifth more stickers than Mary. So allocate the denominator to the right, numerator to the left, but we observe now that the keyword is more. So whatever Mary has, in this case it's 5, Tom will have 3 more than her. So Tom will have 8 units and Mary will have 5 units. Tom has 3 fifth fewer stickers than Mary. Denominator goes to the right, 
numerator goes to the left. Now the keyword is fewer. In this case, Mary has 5 and Tom has 3 less than 5. So Tom will have 2 units and Mary will have 5 units. Now on to decimals. The general rule here is you want to convert decimals or percentages into a fraction first. Doing so will simplify the problem. Now Tom gave away 0 0.6 of his stickers. 0 0.6 is 6 tenths. And when you simplify it by dividing the numerator and denominator by the greatest common factor, this becomes 3 out of 5. Once we've converted it into fractions, it is much easier to deal with the problem. The denominator 5 refers to his total number of stickers. The 3 refers to the action. The numerator 3 refers to the action. So the total here is 5 units. He gave away 3 and now he's left with 2 units. Tom's stickers increased by 0 0.6 times. Change this to 3 out of 5. And we observe that the denominator goes to the stickers. The numerator 3 goes to the action. So before there's 5 units, increased by 3 units, and now he has 8 units. Tom's stickers decreased by 0 0.6 times. Similarly, change this to a fraction, 3 out of 5. The denominator 5 refers to the total number of stickers. The numerator 3 refers to the action. So before it's 5, change it to minus 3. And now he has 2 units. Tom has 1.5 times as many stickers as Mary. So let's change this 1.5 into an improper fraction. First, 1.5 is 1 whole and 5 tenths. Convert it to an improper fraction, that will be 15 out of 10. Simplify it, it will become 3 out of 2. Alternatively, you can press the calculator and it should output the fraction by default. Once we've done that, it's easy to allocate the units. Denominator 2 goes to the right, numerator 3 goes to the left. Keyword here is as many. Tom will have 3 units, Mary will have 2 units. Tom has 0 0.6 times as many stickers as Mary. Change this to 3 out of 5. Denominator goes to the right, fix it there first. Numerator 3 goes to the left. Keyword here is as many. So Tom will have 3 units, Mary will have 5 units. Tom has 0 0.6 times more stickers than Mary. Convert this to a fraction first. Now 5, the denominator, will go to the right. The numerator, 3, will go to the left. Keyword now, be careful, is more. So since Mary has 5, Tom will have 3 more than her. And as a result, Tom will have 8 units and Mary would have 5 units. Tom has 0 0.6 times fewer stickers than Mary. Change this again to a fraction. Denominator 5 goes to Mary. Numerator 3 goes to Tom. But the keyword now is fewer. Since Mary has 5, Tom has 3 less than her. Tom will now have 2 units and Mary has 5 units. On to percentages. Tom gave away 60% of his stickers. So 60% by definition is 60 out of 100. That simplifies down to 3 out of 5. Convert this 60% to 3 out of 5. And we observe that this denominator refers to its total number of stickers. The numerator 3 refers to the action. The total here is 5. He gave away 3 
and now he's left with two units. Tom's stickers increased by 60%. Change this to a fraction. The denominator refers to the total number of items. The numerator refers to the action. So before he had five units, he increased it by three units, and now he has eight units. Tom's stickers decreased by 60%. Denominator 5 refers to the stickers. Numerator 3 refers to the act decrease. The, to the be before is 5 units, change is minus 3 units, and now he has 2 units. Then, Tom has 150% as many stickers as Mary. Convert this into an improper fraction. By definition, 150% is 150 out of 100. That simplifies down to 3 out of 2. So change this to 3 out of 2. Denominator 2 goes to Mary. Numerator 3 goes to Tom. She's on the left. The keyword here is as many. So we'll just plug in according to what we have. Tom has 60% as many stickers as Mary, so change this to 3 out of 5. Denominator 5 goes to the right. Numerator 3 goes to the left. The keyword here is as many. So Tom will have 3 units, Mary will have 5 units. Tom has 60% more stickers than Mary. Change this to 3 out of 5. Denominator 5 goes to the right, numerator 3 goes to the left, but your keyword now is more. So Tom must have 5 plus 3, making Tom 8 units and Mary 5 units. Tom has 60% fewer stickers than Mary. Change this to 3 out of 5. The denominator 5 goes to the right. Numerator 3 goes to the left, but now your keyword is fewer. Since Mary has 5 and Tom has 3 less than her, Tom will have 2 units and Mary will have 5 units. Now as for ratio, Tom and Mary have stickers in the ratio of 3 is to 5. The basic idea is that the left number goes to the left person and the right number goes to the right person. So Tom would have 3 units and Mary would have 5 units. Okay. So this is the most important portion because this is the first step to problem solving, <clears throat> which is on interpretation on the language of mathematics across all these topics. Okay. Now the next thing I want to discuss is on how to identify the single unchanged scenario. So the before and after concept as, you, as, I've, as I've said earlier, is one of the 11 heuristics advocated by the Ministry of Education. So the fastest and most effective way to solve these problems is to identify what type of scenario it is first. There are four basic scenarios. There are more advanced variations, but we'll cover that next time. So the, the four basic scenarios are these, single unchanged, total unchanged, difference unchanged, and all changing conditions. So today I will be discussing the first scenario, single unchanged. First, I will show you how to identify the single unchanged scenarios. Now, 
Now let's discuss how to identify the before and after scenarios. There are four basic scenarios in which the before and after concept may be applied. Case 1, single unchanged quantities. For example, let's say that Ali has $10 and Ben has $35. And Ali donates $3 to a charity. So the change here is Ali would be minus $3. For Ben, there is no change. After that, Ali would have $7 remaining. And Ben would still have $35 remaining. Now in a before and after problem, the most important part is the change. For without the change, there is no before or after to discuss. So we always look at the change rule first. In this change rule, we observe that one item remains unchanged. So this is the single unchanged quantity. Okay, so with this in mind, let us now proceed to discuss the questions. I will first start out with a gradual difficulty increase. Let's start from P4 whole numbers first. Okay, so with this in mind, Tarzan had twice as many monkeys as Jane. After 120 of Tarzan's monkeys ran away, Jane had twice as many tar monkeys as Tarzan. How many monkeys did Tarzan have at first? Okay, let me play you a teaching video taken from my online program to show you how this works. Tarzan had twice as many monkeys as Jane. Change this to 2 out of 1. 2 goes to Tarzan and 1 goes to Jane. Tarzan had twice as many monkeys as Jane. Change this to 2 out of 1. 2 goes to Tarzan and 1 goes to Jane. After 120 of Tarzan's monkeys ran away, Jane had twice as many monkeys as Tarzan. Change this to 3 out of 1. 3 goes to Jane, 1 goes to Tarzan. How many monkeys did Tarzan have at first? Alright, so let's draw out the BCA table. Tarzan, Jane, before, change, after. Now we identify out the statements. Tarzan had 2 units while Jane had 1 unit before anything happened. 120 of Tarzan's monkeys ran away. This is the change. So Tarzan one, Tarzan's change is minus 120. Jane would have 3 times as many as Tarzan remaining. This is after. So Jane has 3, Tarzan has 1. Now we observe the change row. There is no change between 3 and 1. We say that these two are equal. So make them the same. Multiply this by 3. This becomes 3. 2 times 3 becomes 6. Now we can compare the differences from 6 down to 1. 6 units down to 1 unit. There was a change of 5 units. Now this 5 units is precisely this 120 here. So 5 units is 120. Find out 1 unit first. 1 unit has to be 120 divided by 5. That will give us 24. Now we look at our objective. How many monkeys did Tarzan have at first? Now we find the most updated unit, which is 6 units. 6 units will be 6 copies of 24, which is just 144. Okay. Okay, so this is a P4 question involving whole numbers. The first 
step is to identify the before, change and after statements. Tabulate the information. Identify the unchanged quantities and then solve for the problem. The next one will be a P4 problem involving fractions and decimals. So you need to allocate the units regardless of the topics. In the unit transfer method, this is independent of the topics. So it is important that your child understands this prerequisite and, it, and the common language in mathematics. So this prerequisite is also important for them when they want to draw the model. Now let me show you the solution. Pauline has one eight times as many red packets as Esther. Allocate out the units first. One goes to Pauline, eight goes to Esther. Pauline receives nine more red packets. Now she has 0 0.5 times as many red packets as Esther. Change that 0 0.5 into a fraction first. 0 0.5 in fraction form is 5 out of 10. I'll divide the numerator and denominator by 5 and we will obtain 1 out of 2. So this is actually half. So 1 goes to Pauline, 2 goes to Esther. How many red packets does Esther have? Okay, let's draw a BCA table first between Pauline and Esther. Before, change, after. And let's look at what we have. Pauline is one unit, Esther is eight units before anything happens. <coughs> Pauline receives nine more red packets, and that's a change, so this is plus nine. Later on, Pauline has one part, while Esther has two parts. Now we look at the change rule first. We see that there is no change between these eight units and these two parts. So we say that these two are equal, make them the same. Lowest common multiple between 2 and 8 is 8. So we will multiply this row by 4. This becomes 8. 1 times 4 becomes 4. And then we observe from 1 unit up to 4 units. There was a change of 4 units minus 1 new, 3 units. And that 3 units is 9. So one unit must be 9 divided by 3 to give us 3. How many red packets does Esther have? Esther has a total of 8 units. So that is 8 times 3, 24. There is a box full of pebbles and seashells. Pat put in an additional 80 pebbles in the box and the percentage of pebbles increased from 10% to 30%. How many more seashells than pebbles were there in the box in the end? So let's look carefully. Pat put in an additional 80 pebbles into the box. This was the change. The percentage of marbles increased from 10% to 30%. Now this is a bit tricky because this is before and this is your after. Let's change this to fractions first and work from there. And let's draw the before change after table. So what does this mean? Pebbles increase 
from one unit out of a total of 10, which means tables will have one unit, seashells will have 10 minus one, nine units. She put in 80 pebbles, and now the percentage increases to 3 out of a total of 10, which means that the seashells should be 10 minus 3, 7. So we look at the change row now, and we see that there is no change between the seashells before and after. So we can say that these two are equal, we can make them the same. Multiply them to the lowest common multiple, which is 63, 63. And in order to do this for before, we have to multiply it by 7. So we'll multiply this one unit by 7. And we'll multiply these three units by 9. So it gives us 27. Then we compare between the before and after. There was a change of 80. So 27 units minus 7 units should give you 20 units, and the 20 units is 80. One unit should then be 80 divided by 20 to give us 4. Now, what is the objective? You want to find how many more seashells and pebbles were there in the box at the end. You want to find the difference between 27 and 63 at the end. So 63 units minus 27 units will give you 36 units. So 36 units will just be 36 times 4. And that will give you 144. Okay, I'm sorry about earlier. Yeah, just now my mic wasn't down. Okay, but like what I was saying for question three, when you move on to P5 or P6 on the, pers on the topic of percentage, the unit transfer method approach is identical. So the drawing of model will be very difficult as you can see between seven and nine, their lowest common multiple is 63. So there will be many units to cut if you want to try to draw a model out. Okay, so now let's move on to example four. This would be a higher order thinking skills problem. At P5 level, this will be considered challenging. At P6, it will be up to intermediate difficulty. Okay, so even as the question becomes more challenging, the child must be able to tweak the unit transfer method to apply. So this question is a before change, after change, after. Some of the most challenging problems involve more than one change. So if the child is unable to tweak, then the method will be scenario based and only applicable to that particular question. Such methods are ineffective and even if it may be the shortest approach. Okay, the approach must be universal and able to apply across all topics and questions. So let's see the solution here. Let me walk you through the thought process. Tom had an album of Singapore and Malaysian stamps. When he gave away 50 Singapore stamps, there were 2.5 times as many Singapore stamps as Malaysian stamps. So change this to an improper fraction first. This becomes 5 out of 2. 2 goes to Malaysian stamps. 5 goes to Singapore stamps. The keyword here is as many. We just leave that as it is. After his brother gave him another 63 Malaysian stamps, he had 2.5 times as many Malaysian stamps as Singaporean stamps. Again, change this into a fraction. 2 now refers to Singapore stamps. 5 now refers to Malaysian stamps. How many more stamps from Singapore than Malaysia were there in Tom's album at first? Now let's identify what's happening. 
Tom had an album of Singapore and Malaysian stamps. This was before. He gave away 50 oops. He gave away 50 Singapore stamps. Then there were five out of two times as many Singapore stamps as Malaysian stamps. Then there is another change. His brother gave him another 63 Malaysian stamps. He had five out of two times as many Malaysian stamps as Singaporean stamps. Now, the structure is slightly different. It will, there will be a before, change, after, and there will be another change and another after. Between Singapore and Malaysian steps. Okay, let's just trace out what we know. He gave away 50 Singapore stamps. There were five units of Singapore stamps and two units of Malaysian stamps. His brother gave him another 63 Malaysian stamps. He now has five or two times as many Malaysian stamps as Singapore stamps. Five goes to Malaysia, two goes to Singapore. Now we look at this after change after rows and we can see that if we isolate it out in this manner there is no change in the Singapore steps therefore we can make them the same so multiply this row by 2 multiply this row by 5 And then we compare the differences between 25 and 4. Between them, there was a change of 63. So 25 units minus 4 units will give you 21 units. That 21 units is 63. One unit should be 63 divided by 21, 3. Now, how many more Singapore stamps than Malaysian stamps were there in the album first. So we need to find out the exact number first. Now here, this is 10 units. The 10 units has to be 10 times 3, 30. In the Malaysian stamps here, there will be 4 units. 4 units will be 4 times 3, 12. Now keep in mind that this is 30. When you work backwards here, there must be 30 plus 50, a total of 80 Singapore stamps and a total of 12 Malaysian stamps at first. So the difference is simply 80 minus 12 to give us 68. Okay, so that was the unit transfer method applied to a, to an intermediate P6 question. Okay, so that's all the questions I have for you today. Now let me introduce you to the unit transfer method parents webinar. The unit allocation video and identification were taken from there. So for this, this webinar is for parents to learn the unit transfer method to tackle any challenging problems across the topics of whole numbers, fractions, decimals, ratios, and percentages. It can be found at this website. Okay, why is that? So let me just type it in for you to learn more over there. Okay. 
So now I've also come to the Q&A section. Do you all have any questions about what was presented earlier? I'm sorry, I'm getting used to the new <laughs> format. <laughs> the, now, the reason why I'm using videos is because, first, those videos would explain it better than for me to explain it in life. So I believe that would be clearer for you. Secondly, if there are any questions on the spot, I can answer them over here. So that's the reason for this. Okay, welcome, Connie. Welcome, Eileen. Uh, welcome, Faith. I think there's something wrong with my phone. Okay, Q and A. So next week I'll be talking about total unchanged. Just to let you all know what's coming up next Wednesday, 8 p.m. as well. So all these questions were taken. Okay, the P, the question one and question two were taken from our P4 unit transfer method online program. And for question three and four. It was taken from our P5 and 6 unit transfer method online program. Okay. Well, wow, really, no questions, huh? Sorry, my phone is a bit... I think I have some issues with my phone. Okay, welcome to Gantra. Okay, Vidya, this is recorded videos assisted. Sorry, if, if let's say I didn't see your question, uh, please type in again because that there's something wrong with my phone. Then I can only see the last five messages. Well, who is the one who's spamming the XD face? Okay, you're welcome, Cindy. Change phone. Uh. Mine is very old already. Just check something else. <coughs> Not sure what's wrong with my phone.
Okay, thank you for joining Cilian and uh, GG C2. Thank you for joining. Okay, uh, if, if I did not manage to reply to your questions, I'll reply it after the live sessions in the comment and tag you. Uh, I'm sorry for this. I'm but this is just a warm up. There's bad, more things to come next time. Okay, so thank you for joining me tonight. This is Kevin from Mets Heuristics signing off. See you soon.